जय हिंद एवरी वन माई नेम इज अमृता भटनागर आई एम फ्रॉम सी एस ई डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ए की जी ई सी टूडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इंट्रोडक्शन टू ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम ओके दिस इज द मेन आउटलाइन ऑफ द लेक्चर फर्स्टली वी विल अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम देन वी विल अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर द फंक्शन ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम देन गोल्स ऑफ द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम एंड फाइनली वी विल सी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम और यू कैन से क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम बैच ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम मल्टी प्रोग्रामिंग ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम मल्टी टास्किंग ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम रियल टाइम ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम मल्टी प्रोसेसर सिस्टम मल्टी यूजर सिस्टम एंड मल्टी थ्रेडिंग सिस्टम तो देन वी विल डिस्कस दिस ऑल टाइप ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट फर्स्ट इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम तो वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड firstly what is the meaning of operating system and why this operating system is required for our system an operating system is software that acts as an interface between computer hardware component and the user or you can say this is a mediator between the hardware component and user user cannot interact with the hardware without operating system that's why it is very necessary tool for our system every computer system must have at least one operating system to run other programs applications like browser ms office notepad are needed some environment to run and perform their task uh, the examples of the operating systems are windows linux unix and mac os etc so that we can say that operating system is a main or major part of the computer system now you can see this is the this diagram which uh, explain everything about the operating system you can we can see there, there this is the hardware layer we can see here hardware in the hardware we can see cpu ram and io uh, cpu is used for the uh, uh, processing and ram is used for the storing the data and io devices are used for the uh, input output operation so this is the hardware layer but this hardware la layer cannot be accessed by the user without using operating system so that we can see here this is a software layer where we have three components operating system system software and application software what is now the question is what is software software is a test uh, set of so tested programs and its documentation we here we have two type of software system software and application software to run the system software to run the application software we need system software so that the, there are two categories for software system software and application software fine then operating system is also a software system software which uh, use as a interface between the users and hardware okay fine so so that we can say that uh, operating system is a main part of our system without operating system user cannot directly interact with the hardware fine now next is the abstract view of operating system now you can see this these are the other, uh, same layers in the this diagram also you can see the lowest layer is computer hardware where we have different type of hardware like cpu ram io devices and uh, other type of hardware and another layer is operating system which is again a software or system software now next layer is for system and application program so you can see here user can interact with the help of application program or system uh, program in the operating system then operating system will send the commands to the computer hardware so that uh, users can interact with the computer hardware with the help of operating system only that's why this is the main part of our system now what are the major goal of operating system you can see here there are two goals primary and secondary goal. primary goal is easy to use operating system makes system or computer easy to use to the users for example windows windows is popular because it is very easy to use that's why we are using windows operating system uh, and 90% of uh, user use windows operating system and the secondary goal is throughput throughput means the work done in unit time okay so then uh, linux is uh, good operating system which have good 
throughput. That's why uh, now in days Linux is uh, again popularity. Okay. So these are the major goal of the operating system to make the system easy and to increase the throughput of the system. Now, functions of the operating system. Of now, uh, what are the major function of the operating system? First one is the process management. Process management means to create a process, to delete a process and different operation on the process. Now the question is what is the meaning of process here? You can see here this is the name process. What is the meaning of process? Process is a program in execution. That is why it is known as a process uh, management. So, operating system will deal all the type of uh, activities are related to the op process like create a process, delete a process uh, and uh, send the set it into the memory. These are all are the operation which uh, done by the operating system. So, this is the process management. First option is uh, process management which is a very important function is of operating system. Next is memory management. Memory management is another function of operating system. In memory management, uh, operating system allocate the memory to the different processes and deallocate the memory to the different processes. So, that memory management is the major work of operating system. In the memory, we can have more than process, more than one processes. So, that uh, allocation and deallocation of the memory will be done by the operating system. Next is file management. File management deals with all the operation related to the file. For example, creating a file, retrieval of file, naming, sharing and different type of operation related to file is managed by, uh, by the operating system. That is why this is another major role of operating system. Next one is the device management. Here we have different type of input output devices like uh, printer, like keyboard and uh, different type of input and output device and each and every device have its own device controller. So, that to control all these devices and its device controller the work is the work of operating system. That is why the next uh, uh, important function of the operating system is device management. Fine. So, these are the four function and another functions are secondary storage management. When are, we are talking about the secondary storage, it means we are talking about the disk scheduling or disk management because we, we store the data into the magnetic disk or magnetic tape in the sto secondary storage management where we can permanently store the data. So, that it the relate, uh, activity is related to the secondary storage uh, handled by the operating system. That is why it is known as a secondary storage management. Right? Next is security. Security is the another major feature of the operating system. In this case, we can see that uh, we can uh, in the operating system we can create different login system and passwords so that we can uh, so users authorized user. So this is the major and important role of function of operating system. Now next is command interpretation. This model is interpreting commands given by the user and acting system resources to process that commands. So, okay. So, uh, this is a, another uh, function of operating system uh, which can have which can be of two types GUI and CUI. Next is networking. Networking in the networking OS uh, provides uh, good facility. OS provides network connectivity, manages communication and it also manages network security by providing firewall and other security. So, we can say that in the case of networking, networking, OS is also important part. Next is job accounting. In the case of job accounting, keeping track and time and resources used by the job and user because we have more than one processes at a time in the system. So, we have to keep track of their time and resources. That is why this is the another important part of operating system or function of operating system. Next one is the communication man management. The, uh, communication management means coordination and assignment of um, compiler, interpreter and another software resources. So, allot allotment of the resources to the um, different processes another uh, major role or major uh, work of the operating system. So, so, so that we can say that these are the 10 major functions of the operating system. So, we can uh, by the uh, see these function we can see that 
operating system is a major part of our system. Yeah, we cannot handle all the uh, problems or pro processes without operating system. Now, classification of operating system. Now, you can see that we have different type of operating systems here. First one is our batch operating system. Second is multi-programming operating system. Third is multitasking or uh, uh, time sharing operating system. Another is multi-processing operating system. Next is multi-user operating system. And next one is a multi-threaded operating system. And last one is real-time operating system. So, firstly, we will start with the batch operating system. We will understand what is the meaning of batch operating system. Okay. So, by the help of this diagram, you can understand what is the meaning of batch operating system. As you uh, see that batch, the name of batch suggests us a, a similar type of object. You can say that a similar type of jobs can be divided into batches. Okay. So, this batch operating system is used traditionally in the old ages when we do not have the, this type of uh, computer system or this type of uh, high, high level of computers. We have only some uh, a, a simple one computer and there will be a operator which will submit the all the job. Jobs are submitted into punch cards. Okay. So, but so uh, different uh, uh, similar type of jobs or different type of punch card will be uh, divided into different batches and these batches will be submitted to, to a particular operator which is known as a computer operator which deals with all the all these type of things. So, you can see here the user jobs are submitted to the operator. Now, this operator will divide these jobs into batches. You can see batch 1, batch 2, batch 1, we have similar type of jobs, job 1 and job 4, that is why it is in the batch 1. And the another batch 2, you can see here, job 2, job 9 and job 18 are similar type of job, that is why we have it in the batch 2. Now, this operator will send first batch to the operating system and CPU and these job will be, jobs or batch 1 will be executed on the computer system. When it will complete it, then another batch will be submitted to the operating system. So, that this is na this name is, uh, the name of this process is batch operating system because of similar job divide division in the similar jobs, fine. So, that these are the, this, this uh, system is used in the old ages. Now, these systems are not used this time. Now, the advantages and disadvantage of this system. The advantage of batch operating system, it is difficult to guess or know the time required by any job to complete. Processors of the batch system know how long the job would be when it is in the queue. Okay. Now, the next is the main advantage is the processor idle time for batch system is very low. So, this is the main advantage of batch system, this processor will not be idle. Fine. This is a major in advantage. Next, disadvantages of batch operating system. Now, we will see disadvantage because the disadvantage of this oper batch operating system, we have another different, we will go to the another different type of operating system. The computer operator would, sh should have a good understanding of batch system. Fine. Batch system are hard to debug. And the last one is the other jobs will have to wait for an unknown time if any job fails. Okay. So, these are the main disadvantages of batch operating system. That is why we have different type of operating system. You can see. Multi-programming operating. This is the another type of your operating system. Multi-programming operating system. A multi-programming operating system may run many programs on a single processor computer. If one program must wait for an input output diff transfer in a multi-programming operating system, the other programs are ready to use the CPU. As a result, various jobs may share CPU time. Okay. So, what is meaning of multi-programming? Multi-programming means we have more than one processes in the computer memory. Okay. Then when we have more than one process in the um, computer memory, then a, these process will share the time of the operating system or of the CPU, CPU time. It will share the CPU time. Okay. 
So, you can see this diagram. In this diagram, you can see this is the architecture of your main memory where we have firstly we, the, we have operating system. In the memory, we will have in a one part, we will have operating system loaded and uh, another part you can see have we have three jobs. Job A, Job B and Job C. At this time, we can see here CPU is running Job B. Okay. When this job will completed, then Job C, CPU will be assigned to the Job C. The main, main thing here is that we have more than one jobs in the main memory. Job A, Job B and Job C. CPU is executing only one job at a time. But when uh, this job will completed, then it will assign to the another job or there will be there may be possibility of IO request in this job. For example, if job B have IO request that time CPU will not be idle. CPU will be assigned to the another another CPU, another job C. Fine. So then what what will the advantage of this process? The advantage of this process is that uh, CPU will not be idle that time when the C job C is uh, doing IO request, when it will come, it will again execute it. So that uh, each and every program which is in the ma main memory will share the CPU time and uh, it will pass the all the process. Okay, So this is known as a multi-programming system. Now the major advantage and disadvantage of multi-programming system, advantages are CPU is used most of the time and never become idle. Fine. The system looks fast as all the tasks runs in parallel. Short time jobs are completed faster than long time jobs. Okay. Multi programming system supports multiple users because we can have more than one programs in the CPU or in the main memory. Resources are used nicely. Response time is shorter. Response time is shorter because we, each and every process can get uh, early process processor. Fine. That's why response time is shorter. Next disadvantage. What are the major disadvantage of this system? It is difficult to a program system because of complicated schedule. Fine. Complicated schedule handling. It is difficult to program a system because of complicated schedule handling. When we have uh, multiple program in the process, we have to create scheduling here. We have to give priority and schedule the processes for to give CPU. Fine. Tracking all task and process is sometimes difficult to handle. Due to high load of task, long job time jobs have to wait long. Okay. So, these are the main disadvantages of our multi programming system. That is why we are having another type of operating system. Now, the next uh, operating system is multitasking and time sharing operating system. Okay. Multitasking is also known as a time sharing operating system. The operating system that runs more than one task at a time is known as a multitasking operating system. Multitasking operating system can be desktop or mobile operating system. Different tasks run in OS are MS Word, MS Excel, email application, browser, media player, OS services, etc. And users use all these programs at the same time. Fine. What is the meaning of multitasking? Meaning we can use different or we can open different type of application in our system like MS Word, MS Excel, email application and simultaneously and these programs are running in our system concurrently. Fine. So, this is the multitasking operating but it is also known as a time sharing system. Why it is time sharing system? Because in this case, we have more than one programs in the system memory but we allot that particular time slide to each and every process. For example, if we assign 5 second or millisecond for the each and every process, then uh, the process will be run 5 second only and then it will be switched to the uh, processor will be switched to the another process. So, each and for the each and every process, the time limit is given here.
you can see in the, by the help of this diagram you can see uh, we have uh, task 1 task 2 and task 3 three task in the our memory and every task will have 10 nanosecond time here you can see here and task 2 also have 10, 10 nanosecond task and task 3 also have 10 nanosecond in the task 3 or each and every ten task will have more than one more than 10 uh, bus time more than 10 nanosecond but it will not run for the all the bus time it will run only for the 10 nanosecond and again the turn will come uh, um, uh, will come when the all the process will uh, um, run out fine then uh, for example, task 1 after the task 1, the task 2 will execute it, task 3 will execute it, and after task 3 again task 1 will be executed here. So, this time the we, we can have turns of the all the processes and each process will uh, have will run you know, at the time like 9, 10 nanosecond or particular time slice only. Okay, this is the multitasking. Now, the what are the different advantages and dis, different disadvantages of multitasking? These are the main advantage, time sharing, handle multiple user, protected memory. Time sharing means time sharing is a major or main concept of the multitasking. In this case, we will assign some particular time slides to the particular process. That is why all tasks are given a suitable amount of time and no waiting time occur for the CPU. Okay, so that is why this is very good technique for our operating system. Handle multiple user. When we have uh, multiple user, then we can use multitasking. Multi user, multiple users running multi programs can be best handled by this uh, multitasking operating system. All programs run smoothly without a glitch in performance. So, we can handle multiple user at a time in the multitasking system. Protected memory. Memory is better managed in multitasking operating system. Now the disadvantage, there are two main disadvantage of multitasking operating system. One is, one is the limitation of memory and another one is the limitation of the processor. Limitation of memory means if the, our RAM size is less, then there will be a system become very slow or we have many programs in the system at a time, but size of the memory is low. That is why computer becomes very low, slow is that at that time. Fine. So, this is the main limitation of memory. So, next one is limitation of processor. If the processor is slow in the computer, then it can, it can process program slow. Fine. Then, so that uh, if the processor is low or if the memory is less in our system, then must multitasking will not give good results. Okay. Real time operating system. Next operating system is real time. As the name suggests here, here time factor is major important we cannot delay here fine that's why real time operating system is used to uh, that system where we, where we have uh, time is major factor real time operating system in real time operating system time interval to process summation and respond to the inputs is very small example military software system space software system are real time operating system and now this real time operating system can be categorized into two parts first one is your hard real time operating system and another one is the soft real time operating system in the hard real time operating system minor delay is not acceptable we cannot delay for a particular unit time for example missile system satellite system these all are the examples of hard real time operating system Okay, and in the case of soft real time operating system, minor delay is acceptable, like banking sector, like multiple multi system, multimedia system. So, in this case, uh, we can have minor delay acceptable, but in the case of hard real time operating system, uh, uh, minor delay is not acceptable. We have to complete work, operating system have to complete work uh, uh, at its time only, at that time only. Next is multiprocessor system. Mostly we are talking, uh, mostly we have single processor system and uh, we talk about the single processor system, but there is a possible for multiprocessor system also there. Fine. Uh, 
most computer system are single processor system and they have only have one processor however multi processor of parallel system are increasing in importance nowadays these system have multiple processor working in parallelly that share the computer clock memory bus peripheral etc fine so when we have more than one processor in our system then it is known as a multi processor system and if we have only one processor in our system then it is known as a single processor system so in the case of multi processor system we have uh, uh, good a good uh, uh, processing speed because we have more than one processors fine right? you can see with the this with this is example you can see here we have more than one cpu there where we have in the in this case we have n pro processor and all the processor are sharing a single memory system because in the multi processor system share processor are uh, share the memory buses clock and sim etc so in this case we can see memories are shared by the different processor system but the speed of the processing will increase here because we have the multiple processors here types of multi processor now we have two different type of multi processor first one is your symmetric and another one is asymmetric in these types of when we, we will understand firstly we will understand symmetric multi processors what is the meaning of symmetric multi processor in this type of system each processor contains a similar copy of operating system and they all communicate with each other fine right? all the processor are peer to peer relationship no master slave relationship exists between them so we all the processor are same level there will be no master slave relationship there will be no master and uh, who will give the instruction to other uh, slave uh, processor all all processor are on the same level and new job is assigned to any processor that is less burden so so uh, new job can be assigned or that processor which have less burden or less less computation work fine so this is a symmetric multi processor where we don't have any multi uh, any master and slave uh, relationship next is asymmetric multi processor in asymmetric system each processor is given a predefined tasks okay but in here we have master slave relationship there will be one master which will assign the task to the other slave processor so a one will be a master and other will be a slave processor and these slave processors are um, specialized in a particular work or work domain fine next is multi user operating system a multi user operating system in is an operating system that permits several user to access a single system running on a single operating system okay when a particular system is used by the multiple users then this system is known as a multi user operating system the various personal computer can send and, and receive information to the mainframe computer system and mainframe computer system acts as a server here right and other computer system acts like a client here and the next thing is here is resource sharing different users can share different peripheral device like hard drive okay so this is a diagram for the multi uh, users operating system you can see here is a central computer os and this is the clients different clients and these this is the main mainframe system or main system which is uh, different uh, clients or different users are accessing fine right? this is a multi user operating system now next one is next and next is the multi threaded operating system multi threading operating system is very very important operating system where we have threads now the question is what is the meaning of thread firstly we should understand what is process then we will understand what is thread Pro process is a program in execution okay program in execution the process uh, program which is in the memory which is going to execute that this this is known as a process now process is divided into threads you can say that a uh, thread is a light weighted process which is which uh, the uh, which runs in simultaneously in the process we can have more than one threads in a process and these threads will run simultaneously or concurrently in the system that's why the speed of system will increase okay a process can further divide it into sub process called threads multi threading also multiple concurrent tasks to run within a single process for 
maximum utilization of a CPU. A thread is a basic unit of the process code and is called lightweight process. Threads are properly, properly used to uh, improve the application through parallelism. Okay? To increase the parallelism in the system, we will use thread. Threads are used in different type of uh, application like web browser. For example, you can see here thread 1 working to get data from the server and network and thread 2 working to show images and UI to user. So, in this case, two threads are working here. Okay, the one program is known as a thread and now program can be divided or process can be divided to multiple thread and this thread will be executed simultaneously or concurrently in the system so that parallelism can increase. So, this is a multi-threaded operating system. Okay, now have we have completed all the different type of operating system. I think you will have a good knowledge about the classification of uh, different operating system. Thank you.